in previous videos we learnt that these digital pins 0 to 13 on the arduino are digital in the sense that they output a digital signal and digital signals are discrete signals they can only be in two states on or off in arduino's case 0 volt or 5 volt or as we say in code that these pins can either be high or they can be low so in this kind of a circuit if i uh, put a simple led the only two states are that we can either have the led on or we can have the led off but just see here the same circuit i have a led attached to pin 6 which is a digital pin but when i run this simulation notice that the led is dimming LED is not going on or off whereas we just said that you know uh, you know 6 is a digital pin and hence the only two states possible for it are high or low 0 or 1 on or off however on the Arduino there are some pins which behave in a slightly strange way and these pins on the Arduino on the output side I'm not talking about pins on the analog in these are analog pins which means they are not digital they can take uh, you know a, a continuous signal going from 0 volt to 1 volt to 3 volt to 4 volt and anything in between up to 5 volt but digital pins as such can only be on or off but for the pins which are marked here with a tilde so these are digital output pins but marked with a tilde which is pin 3, 5, 6, 9, 10 and 11 these pins are called what it says here PWM pins so the ones with tilde are called PWM and PWM stands for pulse width modulation so these particular pins behave in a way such that they can output a, a sort of an analog signal and we will just understand this, uh, this better why I am saying it's a sort of an analog signal uh, because of the special signal that they generate we are able to control the voltage uh, we can change the voltage from being discrete 0 or 5 volt to being continuous that it can be from 0 volt to 5 volt and it can vary and that is the reason why these uh, this LED that I have attached here uh, I am able to fade the LED not just as in this other uh, simulation where there are only two states it's still attached to pin 6 but here the LED is either on or the LED is off but here the LED is fading uh, I can control the voltage being supplied to the LED so let's understand this concept of PWM pulse width modulation for this I'm going to come back to this circuit which is simple you know on and off circuit and as you can imagine that the code here is very simple I've said set pin 6 to high wait for one second set pin 6 to low wait for one second and this is a loop and that's why I have this uh, LED which is blinking on and off it is not fading so in this circuit let's attach a oscilloscope so if in components you select all and then you search for oscilloscope you will get this oscilloscope and we can see what is the kind of signal that is being output by this pin 6 so to use the oscilloscope I am going to attach it to ground to ground so I have the ground pin to ground pin and from the 6 pin I am going to attach the positive side because I want to read the signal on this pin number 6 and then I am also going to get a multimeter so that I, we can see the voltage change and again uh, the multimeter I'm going to connect the negative to the ground and I'm going to connect the positive back to pin 6 so I'm going to run the simulation and you can see that the voltage output from the pin is either 0 volt or it is around 4 volts and if you look at the signal on the oscilloscope let me make it slightly longer here so let me make it 4000 seconds so that we can see the signal properly 
and then I'm going to run the simulation. So we are getting 4 volts or we are getting 0 volt. 4 volts or 0 volts. So that you know that is intuitively correct because that is what is happening on the pin when we are saying in the code that we are just using uh, set pin 6 to high or low and we know that uh, you know pin 6 is a digital pin and hence it can only be in two states either it can supply the full voltage or it can supply zero voltage and that is exactly what our uh, voltmeter is showing and also our oscilloscope the signal on our oscilloscope is showing so now let's understand pwm because uh, what we are doing right now is using pin 6 as a regular digital pin so now let's look at using it like a uh, in in the pwm mode so for this if i go to the code instead of output as uh, you know high or low i am going to take this output set pin to a particular volt uh, to a particular value and i'm going to replace the this set pin which was either to a high high or to a low i'm going to change this i'm going to change it to this this command and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a value of 255 and i'll explain later why i'm putting 255 and then i'm going to change this to pin 6 because that's the pin we are dealing with so i'm going to change both of them to pin 6 so basically 255 is uh, just to make it simple is equivalent of high and zero is equivalent of low so i have written the same program uh, but now i am giving this pin a sort of an analog value i am not giving it a digital value so when i start the simulation now we are getting this pin is behaving exactly like it was behaving earlier when we were using the digital output and now we are using the PWM output and with a value of 0 and 255 we are getting both the voltage is behaving in the same way the signal is behaving in the same way and the LED is behaving in the same way it's either on or it is off but if I go back to code and instead of 255 I'm going to make it half so between 0 and 255 approximately 127 so remember uh, we said if it's a zero voltage then the line was here and when it was four volts the line was here so now i have set uh, the voltage which was uh, you know the number 255 was equivalent to the full voltage so now that i have halved it the signal should be the signal line should be half right between zero and four it should be around the center point so let's run this simulation and see the signal and now you can see it's not like the line is not in the middle the line is behaving in a strange way and this is what is called pwm so to explain what is happening is rather than around uh, two volts being supplied and the line being in the center what is happening is that the signal is at zero volt and then it's at five volt then it's at zero volt then it's at five volt so it's a cyclical signal and what is happening here is that it's cycling very fast between 0 and 5 volt and as a result the net output on pin number 6 is approximately half 2 volts and this is what is PWM what PWM does is it makes a, sig a digital signal behave like an analog signal but the way it does it is not the way the analog signal would work analog signal we would have got a straight line here at 2 volts but we are not getting that we are getting uh, on and off so we are getting 0 volt and 5 volt because that's what this pin can be this pin can only be in uh, two states 0 volt 5 volt low high on off but by switching the voltage very fast what the net output is becoming the average of the two and so if I go back to the code, so, uh, you know, we, I told you that 255 is equivalent to the, uh, the entire 5 volts and 0 is, is 0 volt. And so 127 was, in this case, we are talking about between 0 and 4 volts. So 127 was 
around you know we are getting a voltage of around 2 volts so i'm going to put the value here as let's say 63 and then let me run the simulation and let's see what happens to the signal so the output voltage has as we imagined it has come down but look at the signal so what is happening is as i have reduced the the voltage the signal is off for a longer period of time and it is on for a shorter period of time and hence the average voltage that we are getting is now half of what we were getting earlier so we were getting 2 volts and now we are getting approximately you know 900 and something millivolts so approximately 1 volt so I, I hope you are able to appreciate the concept of PWM we are getting a digital signal from the from pin number 6 to behave like an analog signal but it's not truly an analog signal the voltage is not like 1 volt and the straight line is here at 1 volt or 2 volt or 3 volt instead by pulsing the signal uh, by making it go high and low very fast and for what duration it is high and what duration it is low the average voltage that we are getting out is the way we are changing the uh, digital signal into a to behave like an analog signal so let's look at a couple of more examples here so if i go back to the code and i put it at a really low value let's say 20 so i'm saying it can either be zero volt or it can be very very minuscule you know some millivolt so then if you see the signal here it's off for a long long period of time and it's on for a very short burst of time and it's this pulse which is making the output voltage here average out to around 320 millivolts and on the other side if i go back to the code and here i say set pin 6 to so i told you maximum is 255 and the reason it's 255 is that pwm so if you remember when we were talking about analog i told you the arduino has a analog to digital converter ADC and it's a 10 bit converter which means that the value it can take is 2 to the power 10 or 1024 so the values uh, for the analog pins was anywhere between 0 to 1023 so whatever voltage we were getting in the Arduino was converting it so 0 volt was 0 value and 5 volt was 1023 value so ADC is 10 bit but PWM is 8 bit which means it is 2 to the power 8. So the maximum value it can take is 256 and the range is between 0 to 255. So here on the ADC 5 volt was equivalent to 1023 but on PWM 5 volt is equivalent to maximum 255. So when I give it, when I put the whole voltage, when I say it's 255 volts, which means uh, the entire whatever voltage maximum we are getting. So that's when it is 4 volts and we are getting a straight line at 4 volts and then at 0 volt. So when it is extreme 0 or maximum, then we get a straight signal because it is a digital pin, it is behaving like that 0 or on or off. But when we have any other value, so now I'll put some value which is closer to the higher side so if i say 200 what do you think will happen to the signal remember that when we were putting very low voltages when we wanted very low voltages output and we were putting numbers like 30 50 60 then it was the pulse was off for a long period of time and it was on for a very short period of time now we have reversed it we are wanting a voltage which is more on the higher side so the what will happen to the signal it will be on for a longer period of time and it will be off for a shorter period of time and hence the average uh, voltage output from pin number 6 will be more towards 4 volts so let's run the simulation and verify so we are getting now approximately you know 3 volts instead of the maximum 4 volts and as you can see in the signal the signal is on for a long period of time and it's off for a short period of time and it's cycling or pulsing let's do one last so if i go back to the code and i make it really really high so 255 was the maximum let's say i will make it 235 and i will start the simulation 
then the signal i'm getting a, a voltage of 3.7 volts and the signal is on for a long period of time and it is off for a very short period of time so by switching the voltage very fast uh, between 0 and 5 volts we can get digital pins to behave as if they are analog pins they are they, their output is a analog signal the power of pwm is that imagine that if you had a led or a motor and you wanted to control the intensity the intensity of the led or the speed at which the motor was rotating you would have needed a potentiometer uh, you know a variable resistance and by using a physical switch you would have controlled the brightness of the led or the speed of the motor but by using the pwm mode without using any kind of a variable resistance any kind of a potentiometer we can control the voltage coming out from digital pins of the arduino coming back to this example which i had shown you earlier in which the the setup is the same we still have you know one resistor and we have a led attached to pin number 6 but when i run this simulation what is happening is that the LED is fading. It's not going on or off, even though it's connected to a digital pin. We are able to control the brightness of the LED without using any potentiometer, any variable resistance. And the way we have done it is, if I go to the code, I have first, I've gone to variables. I have created a new variable called bright, or you can call it whatever you like, brightness. And in my program first, I have said, that set this variable called uh, bright to zero and then i have started a loop which is repeating 11 times and i have said that set pin 6 to whatever is the value of this variable called bright so when the loop is executed for the first time the value is zero and hence uh, you know this value of pin 6 will be zero then I have said, wait for uh, 100 milliseconds. So, uh, you know, the value of pin being, uh, the value of pin 6 being 0 means the LED will be off. It will remain off for 100 milliseconds. And then I have said, change the value of this variable called bright by 25. So, in the second iteration uh, of the loop, the brightness will become 25. So, the LED will glow slightly for 100 milliseconds. Then the value will go up by another 25. So it will be a value of pin 6 is 50 now. And then it will be 75. Then it will be 100 and so forth, incrementing by 25 uh, units each time. And hence, the LED from uh, being off, it will go. So 10 times 25 would have given us 250. So 11 times mean we are over the maximum value which is possible, which is 255. And so the LED will go from being off to being fully bright. And then we have said, wait for two seconds. So when the LED has become fully bright, wait for two seconds. And then we have repeated the loop, but this time on the negative side. Uh, in the first instance, the value of the variable called bright is 255, which means maximum voltage is uh, you know, being throughput from pin number six. And then every time the loop reiterates, the value of this variable is coming down by 25. So the brightness of the LED is coming down gradually and then when it comes it will repeat 11 times so it will be less than zero and it will wait there for two seconds so let's run this command one last time and see the signal so you can see that the led is uh, from being off it came to on and back to off and then again it will fade in it will become brighter and then it will fade out and you can use pwm to vary the voltage to make a LED fade in fade out or to make the motor go slow or fast or any other similar applications.